What's up guys, it's River, and today we're looking at my top cameras specifically for video. Whether you're making daily content, vlogging, educational content, or you're making an epic cinematic masterpiece with Keanu Reeves, I have you covered. We're gonna start with cameras that anyone can pick up and make amazing content with, and then move into the more specialized cameras for more advanced users. But make sure to watch the entire list because you never know when you'll find something new and exciting. So let's do a deep dive, figure out exactly which camera's right for you and which camera's going to help you Stand out. Let's get into it. And just quickly want to say, guys, thank you so much for all the lovely comments you leave. They genuinely make my day. And all of the products we discuss will be down below in the description. As always, let's get into it. So the first camera on the list is the Sony A6000, a very, very good video camera that I feel is very affordable and its slightly older brother, the Sony A6500, that's slightly more expensive with a few more bells and whistles. The Sony A6000 has a 24 megapixel APS-C size sensor with a great XAVS-C codec. That's a mouthful. And this codec is actually a 50 megabits per second professional level codec. It does 24 to 60 frames per second in full HD. Sadly, there is no 4K in this camera, but the A6500 does have 4K. I'll talk more about that at the end of this. However, the HD in this camera is very similar to the more expensive Sony cameras like the A6500 and the A6400. This is a very good camera for the price. The colors straight out of the camera are pretty mediocre and unfortunately it does not have a cinema profile, but you can easily set up a flat profile to edit your colors in post and get a much better image out of it. But the image straight out of camera is nothing to write home about. The autofocus in this camera is phenomenal for both photos and video. Sony is legitimately king of the hill when it comes to autofocus. And despite this being a much, much older camera, it is still phenomenal autofocus. This camera is actually pretty decent in low light and I would feel totally comfortable shooting this at 3200 or 6400 ISO. It has a very solid industrial design and the camera is very, very well made. It has lots of customizable buttons, but the design isn't exactly great for video. It doesn't have a flip screen that comes out to the side and the record button placement is pretty awkward. If you plan on setting this camera up as a studio camera, I would definitely recommend getting a cage for it. You can pick up a very affordable cage from Small Rig for only $100. One thing that this camera does not have is in-body stabilization, which is pretty standard for most Sony cameras. If you do want that, I would definitely recommend looking into the A6500. Speaking of the A6500, it's approximately $400 to $450 more, but it gives you a lot more for your money. The A6500 still has the same Sony colors, but it comes with 10 different cinematic profiles, so it is much, much easier to grade in post and do professional level work with. The autofocus of the A6500 is even better and faster, mainly because it came out a few years after the A6000. And my favorite thing about the A6500 is that it's super small and it has in-body stabilization, so it is very, very easy to get smooth handheld footage with this camera. On top of that, the A6500 can shoot up to 120 frames per second in full HD. It has 4K at both 24 and 30 frames per second. And the low light in the A6500 is very, very good. 10,000, 20,000 ISO is easily achievable with this camera. And ultimately, both of them are great cameras that you could pick up today and start creating amazing content with. And next up, we have the Canon M50, a camera that's easy to pick up and start creating with, but the design of the camera is more with video in mind. This camera has a 24 megapixel APS-C size sensor. However, it only has a standard MP4 codec, which is not the greatest for post-production. However, this camera does have Canon's phenomenal color science, so I don't imagine you'll need to do that much color correction or grading in post. It does 24 to 60 frames per second in full HD and 120 frames per second, however, only in 720p. As for 4K, it does 24 frames per second, which is real time. However, when you switch into 4K mode, it crops your sensor by almost 1.8, which basically doubles all focal lengths. Now that could be a good thing or a bad thing, However, I find it's generally a bad thing. You end up throwing away most of your sensor and your image just qu isn't quite the same. Personally, I wouldn't recommend this camera for 4K, but I can see how it might be useful in certain conditions for time lapses. Maybe you're doing an interview, you could set this up for a wide shot and crop into close-ups. but the 4K really isn't ideal. If you need a camera where you're doing 4K, the Sony cameras are a much better fit. I would really recommend this camera more so for the color science. Speaking of color science, this camera has Canon's famous famous color science. It's a look that is widely accepted as the classic or the standard look that everybody finds appealing. If you're shooting a lot of people, if you're shooting a lot of faces, this camera makes skin and people look very, very attractive. If you're vlogging, if you're doing tutorials, if you're kind of doing a setup like this, you will always 
always look good on this camera. This camera does have Canon's dual pixel autofocus, which is phenomenal for face tracking and motion tracking. However, that dual pixel autofocus is only available in HD. Once you switch into 4K, it goes away and you have like a very mediocre phase autofocus, which honestly, I wouldn't really use. Overall, it has a very solid design and you can tell they were thinking about video when they designed the camera. The ergonomics are great for video and it does have a side flip out screen. And all the buttons are exactly where you would want them to be for a video setup. And of course, it has a phenomenal touch screen that makes it easy to use and pretty much anyone can pick this camera up and have a blast. As for the software, like every Canon camera before it, the software is really easy to use, it's really user friendly and you can literally give this camera to your grandmother and she'll be able to figure it out. Overall, this is a very user friendly camera with great color science if you don't want to get too techy, if you don't want to get overly complex, this is an easy camera to pick up. You'll look attractive, people will look attractive, and you can just have a great time creating really good content with this. I personally think this is one of the easiest cameras to start with if you're a beginner or you don't want to make things overly complex. You will always get great footage from this camera. Next up, we're moving into the mid-range cameras for people who want more horsepower. Next up, we have the Fuji X-T3, X-T30, and X-T4. They're all basically the same camera with slightly different price points and slightly different power outputs. All three cameras share the same 26 megapixel APS-C size sensor. It has a 200 megabits per second Fuji codec, which is double what Canon and Sony offer. The Fuji X-T30 and the X-T3 offer full HD from 24 frames per second all the way up to 120 frames per second at 200 megabits per second. And the X-T4, the newest camera, does 240 frames per second at full HD. Personally, I find that is extremely impressive. All three cameras also do 4K with slightly different power levels. The X-T30, the little brother, does 4K at both 23 and 30 frames per second with no crop. The X-T30 does 4K at 60 with a 1.8 crop, and the X-T4 does 4K at 60 with a 1.2 crop. The big difference is really the frame rates, but they all do 4K. All three cameras feature Fuji's gorgeous color science. I wouldn't say it's the best color science, but it's definitely the most unique color science. If you want a cinematic look in your films, this is definitely the camera to go with. All three cameras come with 10 Fuji built-in film emulations that directly take a look from Fuji's 35mm celluloid film. They all come with a flat profile called a Turna, and they all come with F-Log, which is a ultra-flat log profile for professional level color grading. And on top of that, all three cameras do 10-bit color in camera for video. Neither Canon nor Sony cameras offer this. Now you might be wondering, so is Fuji camera the best camera for video? Not quite. Canon and Sony offer phenomenal autofocus, which I would say is damn near perfect. The Fuji cameras, however, I would say is maybe seven out of 10. It's really not the best, it's not the stickiest, and I find it hunts quite a bit. And your autofocus quality can sometimes depend on what lens you're using. But if you're a cinematic filmmaker that's comfortable pulling their own focus, then this does not apply to you. The Fuji X-T3 and the X-T30 do not have in-body stabilization. However, the newest camera, the Fuji X-T4, does have in-body stabilization. However, it's not quite on par with Sony. As for the design of the camera, they have a really unique build. They're solidly built, but they're meant to be reminiscent of 35mm cameras from the 60s and 70s. The ergonomics on all three cameras hardware wise are fantastic and they're all very easy to use. However, the menu system in the Fuji cameras can be a bit cumbersome and can take a little bit of getting used to. I personally found the Fuji cameras to be a little bit unintuitive compared to Canon cameras. The Fuji X-T4 was made with video users in mind. It has a button dedicated specifically for switching between photo and video mode and it has a side swivel screen that is very, very helpful when it comes to video making. Overall, all three cameras have a ton of horsepower and I would definitely say the Fuji cameras have the most unique look for cinematic filmmakers or people who just want to get something different out of their cameras. The only thing that really holds the cameras back is the outdated autofocusing system and the lack of IBIS. Are you someone that wants to keep their camera safe while traveling? If so, this camera bag could be perfect for you. Today's sponsor, the Everyday Camera Bag, the camera bag that's more than just a camera bag. They sent me some of their bags and I personally love them. I loved being able to keep my camera safe and secure while also being able to carry my everyday things in. This way, I don't need to buy two bags. The best part is it provides a safe and secure compartment specifically for my camera combined with a water resistant design. This way, I know that my camera gear is always safe and secure. I mean, it looks pretty awesome and I take it everywhere I go. It's affordable quality that will last and it's something any YouTuber, filmmaker, cinematographer, photographer, or an artist would love to have. For a limited time, if you use the code word RIVER, you get 10% off, but only for a limited time. So check out the link down below in the description to get yours.
Next up, we have the Canon 90D, which I personally think is one of the best daily content creator and documentary cameras on the market today. Also, this camera has a little brother known as the Canon 80D, which is slightly cheaper and isn't that far behind in specs. What makes this camera unique is that the physical design of this camera was made with filmmakers in mind, and it's very, very evident as you look into it. This camera has a 32 megapixel APS-C size sensor. However, that is very high resolution for an APS-C size sensor. This camera only has an IPB codec, which is not a professional level codec and is really not made for color grading. However, this camera is really made for turning content around very quickly and every day. You're not really gonna be color grading the kind of content you shoot with this camera anyway, so I don't think that's a problem. This camera does 24 up to 60 frames per second with autofocus and sound and has a specialty 120 frames per second super slow motion mode without autofocus and sound. However, I don't think you need autofocus and sound in 120 frames per second because in slow motion, you're not pulling your own focus and you would never use sound for a slow motion clip. These frame rates and specs are actually fantastic for a camera at this price point. And my favorite thing about this camera is the fact that it has 4K at both 24 and 30 frames per second, wait for it, without a crop. This camera does 4K, no crop, full sensor readout, which is a first for Canon. If you wanted a Canon camera so you could get that classic Canon look, but you wanted 4K without a crop, this is the camera for you. The autofocus in this camera is phenomenal. It has Canon's dual pixel autofocus, which again is great for face tracking, object tracking, pretty much anything. It is very close to set it and forget it autofocus. This camera does not have built-in stabilization. However, it does have digital IS, which isn't the greatest, but it gets the job done. Canon puts all their stabilization in the lenses. However, that can be a problem if you decide to use third-party lenses. So something to be aware of. However, this is a pretty small and light camera and you can easily put this on a gimbal. When it comes to design, this camera was made with video in mind. It has a side flip out screen that does not hit the mic jack that's on the same side of the camera. Most camera manufacturers mess this up. It has an LCD screen right at the top so you can see all of your readouts like shutter speed, aperture, ISO, focus mode, drive, everything you need. Sometimes even a single setting can mess up your shot. This camera is nice and light with a nice deep grip, great for handheld work, plus it has Canon's LP6 battery which will easily last you four to six hours of continuous shooting. Despite having the same battery as the Canon 80D, this camera actually has 30% more battery life. If you wanna save a little bit of money, you can always get the Canon 80D. It's slightly cheaper. However, the Canon 80D does not have 4K and the Canon 80D does not have 120 frames per second slow motion mode. But if you don't need those two things, the Canon 80D is a phenomenal camera. And now we're moving into the high-end specialty cameras for more advanced users. Next on the list is the Canon EOS R, which is Canon's first full-frame mirrorless camera. This camera has a 30 megapixel full-frame sensor, which is the largest sensor size you can get, which comes with many, many benefits, such as a more cinematic feel and better low light and less noise to signal ratio. All together, you get a much, much higher quality image. And it has the all-eye high bitrate codec, which is about the same as the Fuji codec. This is a professional level codec meant specifically for professional post-grade work. This camera does full HD up to 60 frames per second and 4K at both 23 and 30 frames per second. But much like the Canon M50, this camera has a crop factor of 1.8, h which personally, in my opinion, makes the 4K not that great. One of the biggest selling points of this camera is the fact that it has Canon's gorgeous color science. People, objects, scenarios, landscapes, anything you wanna throw at it, look gorgeous right out of the box. If you shoot a lot of fashion, portraits, or people, I really, really recommend this camera. This camera has C-Log, which is an ultra flat color profile made specifically for professional level color grading. In camera, it does 8-bit color, and externally, you can do 10-bit color. However, to get an external recorder that allows you to record 10-bit is somewhere between $17 to $2,000. That is almost the price of this camera. Personally, I don't really think it's worth it unless you're shooting high level professional work, in which case it's a requirement. This camera features Canon's dual pixel autofocus, which is phenomenal with both face tracking and object tracking. Personally, I feel this is very, very close to set it and forget it autofocus. Personally, I find the autofocus in the Sony cameras is a little bit faster and maybe even a little bit more accurate. But when the Canon camera pulls focus from object to object, I find the focus rack is very smooth and organic and it feels like human pulling focus. Personally, to me, that's a huge bonus. I really hate the look of a digital focus pull. It takes me right out of the moment. The autofocus in this camera is phenomenal and it works really well, even in low light. The camera's build and design is very solid. The ergonomics are fantastic. Personally, I prefer the ergonomics of a Canon DSLR versus the Canon mirrorless. However, it is still 
a lot better than a Sony mirrorless. And build quality wise, these are really well built cameras and they will last forever if you take care of them. Also, because this is a professional grade camera, it has a professional grade battery. This camera features the Canon LP6 battery, which will easily last you three to four hours on a single charge, or at least two hours of constant filming. A big plus of getting the new Canon mirrorless cameras is the fact that you get access to the new Canon RF line of lenses. And Canon is not kidding when they say these lenses are revolutionary. They're expensive, but they honestly look better than almost any other lens manufacturer on the market today. They look as good, if not better than Sigma art lenses, which is in my opinion, the best DSLR lenses you can get right now. And just out of curiosity, let me know in the comments down below what lenses you guys love. I personally love the Sigma art line and I don't think I'll ever switch. Overall, the Canon EOS R is a phenomenal camera. It gives you a professional level HD image that you can do a professional color grade on. Unfortunately, the 4K, I'd probably skip it if you want 4K, but this is a camera for under $2,000 will give you a professional level HD image that you can easily shoot commercials with, professional corporate work with, pretty much anything you want as long as it's in HD. Also, because the HD in this camera is super sampled from a 4K image, except for the size of the image, I often find it's just as detailed and just as rich as a 4K image. And next up is the a7 III, which is an extremely versatile full frame camera. This camera has a 24 megapixel full frame sensor, which has many benefits such as a wider field of view, a more cinematic look, less noise, and way, way better in low light than a regular APS-C size sensor. And it features a 100 megabits per second XAVSC codec, which is a professional level codec made for professional color grading. Basically, you can do quite a lot with this camera in post because it has S-Log2, S-Log3, and hybrid log gamma built right in. This camera comes with professional level cinema profiles made for professional level cinematic, corporate, and commercial work. It does 24 all the way up to 120 frames per second in full HD and does 4K at 29 and 30 frames per second with no crop. And the 4K is actually super sampled from a 6K image so it's slightly sharper and more detailed than a regular 4K image. And some of you guys in the comments might be like, actually River, there's a 0.0001% crop on this image. It's such a slight crop that you won't even notice it. And because it's a full frame camera and Sony legitimately is the king of low light cameras, 20,000, 30,000, even 40,000 ISO on this camera is very, very usable. Because this is a newer camera, the standard colors right out of the camera are quite good. However, they're still not Canon or Fuji good, but this camera has plenty of cinema profiles built in, so you're good to go and you can really build a look in any way you like. Because this is one of Sony's newer cameras, the autofocus in this camera is extremely advanced. It is very fast, very reliable, and you will almost never have an issue. If you wanted to use this camera on a gimbal, you could literally set it and forget it. The autofocus is that good. Also, the in-body stabilization in this camera is phenomenal. The sensor itself is stabilized by a 5.5 axis gyroscope. If you want to do handheld work or anything with motion, you will get extremely smooth footage. The build quality of this camera is of very high quality and will probably last you forever if you take care of it. The ergonomics of this camera are phenomenal and all the buttons are in just the right place. However, the menus can be a bit overbearing and sometimes there's just way too many pages to go through. I would definitely recommend building a custom menu in the My Menu section so you have everything you need at your fingertips. The only thing missing from this camera is a flip screen that comes out to the side. I would not hesitate to use this camera for professional level work. Also, because this is a Mark III style body, it features Sony's newest battery type, which is actually just as good as Canon's LP6 battery, so you will not have a bad battery life. Most Sony cameras have terrible battery life, but this camera fixes it. Also, the record button is no longer in an awkward place. It's easy to reach and easy to press. The a7 III is the camera that I've always wanted. I would not hesitate to use this camera for professional level work. There's very little that this camera does not deliver on. Well guys, that wraps up our video on my top video cameras. If you guys have any questions about these cameras whatsoever, hit me up in the comments down below and I'll make sure to get back to every single one of you. As always, the products that we discuss are down below in the description, so be sure to check that out. And if you like this video, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you guys like art, photography, filmmaking in general, professionally, I'm a cinematographer. I do a lot of fashion, a lot of music video, a lot of short films. And this summer, I'm gonna be sharing all of that with you guys on this channel. So if you guys are interested in that type of content, make sure to subscribe to this channel and I'll see you guys this summer. Until next time, guys. Bye.